Another short presentation from the PLC University website. What is a PLC? This is the 23rd in the Factory Rat series, and in this episode, we're going to apply the basic instructions, most of what we've learned so far, into the conveyor application that we were previously working with back in earlier episodes. At least you have forgotten the application that we were working on. This is an image of it. We have three conveyors, a gravity conveyor and two power conveyors, conveyor one and conveyor two. We also have four photo eyes that are the input to the controller logic stored in the memory. We also have a downstream call for cartons. Obviously, we can't push cartons off of conveyor one onto conveyor two unless there's a downstream call. So this is the application that we're working with. We're controlling cartons on and off of this conveyor system. This is where we left our code, our logic, back in, I think it was episode 18, when we were doing count up and count down instructions again against a single counter data type C50. The first rung is the rung that controlled the conveyor motor. And remember, we had this set up to index cartons onto the conveyor. And we did it on the trailing edge of the carton. So when you look at rungs one and two, you see that when the photo eye goes from on to off, or you could say this instruction goes from false to true, then it either counts up or counts down. It counts up at photo eye one when they clear photo eye one onto the conveyor. And and when they clear photo I4 onto the next conveyor, it counts them down off. We're going to eliminate the first rung and we're going to change the code that actually controls the conveyor motor, but we're going to keep our counters. Two quick things to point out. I move the conveyor motor to output one. I want to leave output zero open for a fault light. I also took input zero and one away from the photo eyes and I move the photo eye to photo eye one to input two, photo eye four to input five. I also took the reset button away from input five and I put it on input 19. Now there's 16 bit words, so 19 would be word one is not word zero. See, this is word zero, word one, bit three. This is the classic start stop circuit. Another thing that I did is I used the geezer buttons up here. That's for geezers. And I made this as large as I could make it instead of everything fit on the screen. As I add more code, I'm going to have to downsize that in order to get it all on the screen. The production manager has asked us to add components and logic that would detect incorrect carton sizes passing through the conveyor. We're going to add that logic. Let's quick jump back to our graphic. I've removed all but one carton from the system so you can see that the correct size carton fits between the optical paths of 1PE and 2PE. That means if a carton blocks 1PE and 2PE simultaneously, then that carton is too large to be on this conveyor. It's not part of to our basic start-stop logic for conveyor one motor, we've added an additional instruction, true if off, fault. To control fault, we have photo I one and two. If they are both blocked at the same time, it will turn on output zero. I'll show you. Photo I one and photo I two. That energizes the fault light. Keep in mind that we're using a seal in contact because it is always possible that one of these can come unblocked due to coast of the conveyor. So we want to seal it in. At that point, the conveyor stops. You can see up above. And then the operator has to come and see why it faulted, sees the cartons too large. And then once they've removed the carton, then they can push the conveyor stop button because remember the conveyor is not running and that clears the fault. We're going to be using this conveyor system for quite a few episodes yet to come. If you're following along in the manual and you're using the Connected Components Workbench set of manuals with the Micro 800, then this project begins based approximately on page 152. If you're using this manual, it's on approximate page 95. If you're using this manual, approximate page 119. This manual has been replaced with this set of manuals split up for, for ease of use in colleges, and it would be on page six of the second volume of the set. And that is how to use some of the basic instructions in a conveyor application.